Hello, all of you. My name is Arun Balchandran. Uh, I have been into the world of corporate training and consulting in the IT field for last 22 years. I have focused mainly on database, data warehouse, and the business intelligence technologies related to Microsoft. So I have been dealing with SQL Server databases, your ETL technology, which is SSIS, then your technology, which is for analysis, uh, history analysis, as well as future analysis, projection, data mining, tool called SSAS, and also focused on tool called SSRS, which is a reporting tool. I have been doing consulting as well as training on these tools and these technologies. Today, I'm going to present you with the syllabus that we have prepared for people who are working in IT and would like to be a data engineer. So they would actually be working in some other area. Maybe they are front end developers or web developers, but they want to come into database. So for this, we have designed a course. It is called SQL Server for Data Engineers. And therefore, I'm going to present that to you. Let me share the uh, course coverage with you. What is the objective of this course coverage? It is to introduce participants working in IT to basic SQL Server and certain T-SQL features. So what is a prerequisite? Prerequisite is people are new to SQL Server or any database for that matter. And basic knowledge on tools like storing, uh, which are storing data like Excel, etc., would be good. And what is the methodology of the training? The methodology of the training is basically a theory sessions followed by demo. Now, what we have seen is whenever a person wants to get into data science or data engineering, uh, there is a lot of rush and requirement for both of these jobs. And if you want to be a data engineer and have never dealt with data, although working in IT might be working in some other area, maybe web application or Windows application. So want to get into data for them, this course is very useful. And uh, this course has been selected by going through many courses to figure out what is uh, required as a data engineer. So you have Azure, which you would be using as a tool. But before all of that, you require certain basics of SQL Server. And that is what our present is. And uh, the job, if you look at most uh, coveted job, it is uh, first is the data science. So data science related, you have data engineer, then you have artificial intelligence. And because we have all this as uh, one of the most or uh, the best or the most coveted job. Coveted means people want to get into that job and it is in demand. Therefore, we thought of coming with this course. And uh, anybody who is in, has done this course can easily start with a basic salary of around 7 lakhs and can go further. If you are into senior level, of course, your salary will also be more. So this is not limited only to SQL. After this, you may want to learn something related to data analysis. And uh, that is a separate course. So if you do a complete package of SQL data analysis, Azure Power BI, you will be getting a very good salary uh, hike uh, from your present job because this data engineering is a demanding uh, very a uh, job which is in demand. Let us go through this training. It is going to be 60 hours. It will be five days a week. So which means it would be around uh, two and a half, three months by the time you cover or you finish this course. Then what is going to be covered in this course and what is the suggested timing? We don't worry about the suggested timing. It can change. Our main course focuses on first SQL Server as an application. What is its architecture? So we will focus on the SQL Server logical architecture. Then we focus on 
how to create tables inside SQL Server. The prerequisite for this would be some modeling techniques which we will cover in the introduction. So we'll have some introduction. There we will cover how to uh, create tables in the design from the design angle and then we will come to table design. In table design we are going to see what are the different data types we have in SQL Server. So when you are feeding data, storing data, you require to have different data types. So we will see different data types using which we can store the data. We will see what is a key like you have primary key, foreign key, etc. And then we'll see certain constraints which implement business rules. So you have business rules related. You have uh, something related to uniqueness of the data and something related to the data type. So all of them are actually constraints. They are called constraints because uh, the data you enter will be verified against these rules. The data you enter will be verified against the data type, the keys and the constraints. Then we will learn about a language which is specific to SQL Server called T-SQL. And we learn some basics of it. People who are from programming background will have this. This will be a cakewalk because uh, this is more of a procedural programming. People who are from procedural or object oriented or object based programming, this will be very easy. So then we will look at creating databases. So we will create some databases, create some tables. And uh, here initially we are only looking at the design aspect. So the user interface will be used. Then we will use some programming languages to create tables, create records, insert some records and update the data, delete the data, merge. It was very, very basic in SQL Server. And then we move on to queries. So I have seen that people who are getting into data engineering would require good amount of query basics. So this is the query basics that we are looking at. Writing uh, basic SQL Server queries, right? Uh, like select class, from class. Then you have uh, sorting using order by. Then how to filter raw data using where class. Then how to group the data, how to consolidate the data using grouping. These parts will be covered. Then we will have how to access data from multiple tables using joins. So we'll see the different types of joins like cross, inner join, outer join, full join. So we'll see the different options available. Then we'll look at subquery. How to write a query within a query. So writing a query within a query is very useful in many conditions, many situations. So we'll see how to write it and what are the different options available. Then we'll see what is correlated subqueries. So these are all uh, important features. Once you know how to write queries using joins, subqueries and certain basic uh, query keywords, we'll then move on to certain advanced features in query. So we'll look at what is a windowing function, how to aggregate the data, how to analyze the data, how to rank. Okay, so these are some of the functions that we would be using and we call them as window functions. So we'll explain what do we mean by windowing, etc. We'll see pivot, unpivot, common table expressions and certain other features which are used in SQL Server uh, for your DML. Once this is done, we move on to a little more uh, you know, a little more than just query, we see how can we implement a simple business logic related to data using stored procedures, cursors, and how to implement certain custom calculations using functions. So we'll be looking at uh, other T-SQL features like variables. Then because some of you might be from programming background, you will be looking at the structure of if else and looping. And then we will be using stored procedures, which are basically programming unit where business logic is encapsulated. And how do I encapsulate data related business logic using in parameter, out parameter, return type? We'll see. For example, if I withdraw cash from the ATM, Related to the database in your bank, there are multiple 
steps that you need to do. How to do those steps? Can we do it in the application, front-end application, or can we do it in the back-end? If we do it in the back-end, when do we use a stored procedure? How do we use it? It's a stored procedure. What is the advantage? We'll be looking at the need and the advantage. So that is your stored procedure. Then we look at functions. Functions in the sense, we have scalar, we have table-valued functions. So we'll look at what do we mean by scalar function, table-valued function. If I have a calculation which is going to be a little complex, I can use a function. If I have a set logic, I can use a function. So there are various places where a function can be used. And functions mainly look at return value. So that is the use of a function. So we'll also see differences between what is a stored procedure and function. This part we'll be looking at. The cursors, if we do have time, we will look at cursors. So I'm planning to take cursors, we'll take, take that. And how to access the data using cursors. This part is not too important for a data engineer if you are into cloud. So, uh, so that, that part, but still we will look onto that also. Then we will look at views and triggers. How do I see data from different angles? How can I secure the data? I don't want everybody to see the data. I want only some of them to see the data. How do I do that? How do I give customized perception to a person? So in SQL Server, you write a select statement and the select statement will give you only the columns that are required, the rows that are required. But uh, you, everybody does not require all the data. So how do I customize what is needed to be shown to whom? There we use views. And we'll see how to implement certain business rules using triggers. Like before I withdraw cash, I want to find out what is the balance. Without finding out the balance, I should not be able to withdraw the cash. So these are all rules that we implement in the database. So we have something called triggers, the DML triggers. So we will see views and DML triggers. Then the next important thing as a data engineer is to see how to uh, capture the changing information. Most of the time, this is not useful for application-oriented database. That means uh, operational database. But analysis-oriented database, I have to store the changing information. For example, if a product is priced 10 rupees today, tomorrow it is going to be priced 20 rupees or five days back it was priced 10 rupees. So if it is 15 today and five days back it is 10, I want to track both. Five days back, the same product, the price was 10 rupees. Today it is 15. How do I track that? This is called change data tracking. So we can deal with changes in data using three mechanisms in SQL Server. Change data capture, change data tracking, capture and temporal tables. So we'll see how to use each one of the feature to track data changes so that it will be useful further for analysis. Then we move on to physical structure and architecture. So first we will look at what is an index. Index is a mechanism to access the data fast. So we will see what is the structure and two types of indexes are there based on structure, clustered and non-clustered indexes. So the two. And then we will also see what do we mean by heap. How is data stored when there is no index? How is data stored when there is an index? And we will see other index types like unique index and filtered indexes. So once you understand the index types, physical and logical, then you are ready to see the physical architecture of SQL Server. How does act, how is data stored internally? So using files, pages, extents, allocation unit. And we'll also see how data is stored internally using the index. So that's the physical architecture. How does a physical architecture help later when you want to optimize your queries, etc. The physical architecture really helps. Then the last topic that we look at is transaction and concurrency. And when you're looking at transaction, locking and concurrency, we'll look at what we mean by transaction. When do we use it? So transaction is logical set of steps, which is 
encapsulated in one unit and that unit is called transaction like when i withdraw cash inside the database i may be doing two three operations but those two three operations should have a particular sequence and should be all of them should be done or none of them should be done so that is your asset property we will look at it all the asset properties we will see what are the different types of transactions in sql server like implicit auto commit and nested then we have locking concepts whenever a client is going to access sql data you have locks why locks are required because multiple transactions can access the data so locking is required so that other people do not access the same data simultaneously there is no uh, contention of using the resources so we do have lock modes we have lock granularities we have lock compatibilities live locks are there lock escalation is there so we will look at all these different ideas and concepts related to locking then we'll see the locking architecture how is locking internally implemented then after we have seen locking and transaction now we go to concurrency okay so this is how the tables are locked to access what are the different concurrency models like optimistic pessimistic what are the different issues we find in concurrency when two or more users want to access the same data what issues are there and how do you overcome the issue using isolation levels so we have read uncommitted read committed repeatable read serialization and snapshot isolation levels so and then we will look at how the two or more applications can have blocking or deadlocking over the table or over any resource so we have two types of deadlocks which we will look, discuss Cy cyclic cycle deadlock and conversion deadlock we look at how to use lock hints how to tell sql server please lock this please lock that how to give that and when we will also see how to choose the concurrency model so this is the course that we have designed for data engineers so please do attend this course uh, please also uh, inquire when if you need some more information you can get on to go online training and do some inquiry on this and so you can join the training it's a, it will be an hour a day and it will be uh, on weekdays so the timing is based on the convenience of the participants so we will decide the slot is there but within the slot the time can be decided based on the participants convenience so with this uh, i close uh, the deep in detailed information about this course so welcome all of you to this course okay. and see you on the day of the course when the course starts thank you